Hi, my name is Alex Hayes, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to do an external jugular IV line. This is a good tool to have, um, especially when patients come in and they don't have that great of quality veins and need a really good size IV, maybe because they've had chronic health problems over their life and all their veins have dried up, or maybe they've made some bad decisions and used IV drugs and ruined their veins. Um, so this could be a good last ditch effort if they need an IV for fluids, medications, or whatever. And so I'm going to show you in this video a step-by-step -step process of how to do that. All right, this should be everything you need to do this. We have your IV right here, the tubing that goes along with it, a saline flush with the cap for the IV attached to it, um, some tape. Oh, I almost forgot one thing. We need some gauze in case we need to take it out because it doesn't work. We don't need a tourniquet because we're not going to put a tourniquet on someone's neck for an EJ. We're going to put them in Trendelenburg and let the blood drain to the top of their body, into their head, and we'll use that to plump up the vein to poke it. And then here's our chloroprep to clean and a tegaderm to secure it in place. So here's our volunteer, Lindsay. She's volunteered her external jugular veins for this video, and she's a little bit nervous, but it's okay. We're going to take it nice and slow and step by step, and it's going to be great. Is that right, Lindsay? All right, so this is the position you need to put the patient in to help the blood drain from the inferior part of their body up to the superior. It will just, gravity will help keep it down this way. And as you can see, these vessels are really good. And even a patient has like poor vessels in their arms, like most of the time on most people, these are always still pretty good. So this can be really easy to do. It's just more intimidating for the patient and maybe for the person putting them in, but they're pretty easy. And yeah. And to help these veins pop out more, we have the patient do the thing that's called bearing down. It's where you kind of tense up your abdominal muscles and like, kind of like, uh, like you're trying to go to the bathroom, but not really, because it just helps pop those out and it gives a little extra pressure in the vessels in the neck. And so do you want to practice that for me? Sure. See, and you see right here, these are all starting to pop out. They get a little bit more firm as if there was a tourniquet. It's just a way of getting these to pop out a little bit more and then go a long way. Okay, so now we're gonna clean the site. Um, I like to wear a mask, because sometimes I get really close, just to make sure my breath doesn't get on the site and it stays clean. So first we'll just use an alcohol prep pad. And we'll make sure her hair is out of the way, so when we put this tegaderm, it doesn't get her hair stuck in there and potentially rip it out when it's time for it to come out. So we'll just use this alcohol prep pad. And then this chlora prep, an additional cleaner. We can really scrub this whole area make it really nice and clean. And then it's very important to let it dry because that's when it actually does the real cleaning. That evaporation time will give it enough time to potentially kill any bacteria on the outside of our skin so we don't push that into the vessel and we put the needle through. So we want to make sure it's totally dry before we even poke her. And it'll hurt less too. If it's wet and you poke a needle through it, it burns. Okay. All right, so now we have our needle. It's all clean and it's dry. One thing you want to do is you still want to anchor the skin. So we're going to put the needle about right there. You still want to anchor it so it doesn't move, but you don't want to pull too hard an anchor that you flatten out the vein. So I like to go like this. And, and then you want to bear down for me really good like we practice. Perfect. See, it's bulging out. And then we can just go... Perfect. We have a flash. We're going to advance the catheter. Needles out. We are in the vein. Or is it relief for you? No, 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 it's not that bad. <laughs> and then we're going to connect the tubing. And the one thing about these, compared to other IVs, is sometimes they don't drain down the line as fast. See, I'm draining the blood down, but it's not coming out that fast. But we're nowhere in because it's still draining. On a vein that has a tourniquet connected to it, it has a lot more pressure. But we know we're in there. So we're just going to let it drain down. Man, it's taking too long to drain. So we're going to just pull a little bit of blood out to get that potential air out. Let's secure it down. Let me just put the tourniquet on just like that. And 
And all these Tiger Derms are a little bit different depending on the brand and what kind of IVs you have. And then I'm just going to come in this drawer. It's kind of out of the shot. And since it didn't have enough pressure to drain that blood down, we're just going to pull it out to make sure there's no air in the line. And it's pulling back really easy. As you can see, I can just fill this up. So we know it's in there too. It's not tricking us. Now we take our saline. And we can just gently flush. You can see it's going in the veins, not bubbling up right here. And we can even pull back and it pulls back just fine. And then flush and clamp and we're good to go. This is all good for medications or whatever they need for their treatment. One thing to note with EJs though, if you're doing them, it's you should only do it one poke on one side. Because if you poke one side and the vein gets damaged and it starts bleeding in that area and swelling up, it can cause it to swell up to potentially uh, block the patient's airway. And so if you poke both sides and it's swelling on both sides, it can cause some angioedema and potentially have to, this patient might have to be intubated because of that. So as you can see, th these really are not that hard. They're just more intimidating um, for the patient and even maybe the person putting them in. But after you practice a few of them and you have proper training, um, it becomes very easy. This is easy. It could take me five minutes on a real patient that may need it. Um, and it can really accelerate this patient's care and help them get the medications and the fluids or whatever else they need for an IV when you're struggling to get access. So it's a really good tool to have, especially in the emergency department or just about any other hospital setting.